I study societies for 500 years ago and the most unique document I've come across for the 16th century is what I call the first book of fashion. This is a manuscript put together by a man called Matteo Schwarz who works for the Augsburg merchant firm of the Fugger and he starts in 1520 to compile this manuscript that will show him in 137 images dressed from when he was a baby to when he's an old man. He finishes it in 1560. I think the real surprise is the idea is this, this autobiography, sartorial art autobiography of this man way back in the, what, the 1520s, 30s, which is extraordinary. What's so extraordinary about it is um, that you realize how important fashion was at the time. We think of the Renaissance as a period where paintings became important, but really um, what aroused so much visual interest happened in the streets. So Schwarz is a fashion innovator, he constantly changes styles, he's interested in integrating elements of tradition, but also in pushing styles forward, and it's immensely colorful what he's wearing. He also is startling in uh, showing this relationship with different illuminists he worked together with, and the, the candid nature of these encounters in the interest to depict himself lifelike. So for instance, he is the first person after Albrecht Dürer to show himself naked on two uh, uh, paintings in, in this extraordinary book. Do I think male fashion is about power dressing? Well, I think there are characteristics of male fashion that do accentuate the sort of manliness, the physique, the, the kind of strength of men. And it's, you know, it's really anything from a sort of chunky kind of Rolex type watch to, um, you know, we don't have cod pieces now, but we have pretty tight jeans. I don't think fashion should be imposed on anyone, even though, you know, physically one has to choose your own clothes. It, there's, there's definitely a, a scale of choice in there. And I think for some people it can be a huge confidence and something that builds you up and, you know, almost like a shield or, you know, a new face or, you know, whatever it is, it can be something that is positive in someone's life. What surprised me most was how important courtship is for him. We think of this as a period in which marriages were arranged for those middle classes to which he belonged and the upper classes, but nonetheless, uh, he's intensely romantic and the clothes he wears also facilitate that and you can see that there is a market already for romantic accessories. We see him for instance wearing heart-shaped uh, little man bags and holding flowers when he goes out to look for love. The, there are two pairs of tracksuit bottoms in the collection or in the five photographs. This was one of them and I wanted them to be more special even though I love tracksuit bottoms and I find them and, and the way to kind of elevate them as an, as an object is to lay, you know, a rather expensive or, you know, interesting kind of lace on top of it. So it's actually just cotton jersey underneath with a separate layer of fabric on top. Um, and then the binding and stuff is, you know, as in, just in terms of the color of that was from the, the original photograph, it had some, gold colours in it and I kind of wanted to work out a way of putting that in there. What I'd love visitors to experience is coming up the staircase to be confronted by these dual images, one of Matthias Schwarz in his um, Renaissance adornments and, each, and with Maisie Broadhead's very witty, very insightful kind of modern counterparts of these quite believable young men. So when you first see them, you think, oh, well, this is just a picture of a guy, you know, wearing a very nice outfit he's bought down at, you know, down in Cambridge somewhere in some nice shop. But in fact, um, they are deliciously subversive. So I first uh, learned about Maisie Broadhead's work um, in London. I saw her first solo show in the Sarah Myerscough Gallery uh, just after she'd graduated um, from her 
uh, MA and I was very taken by her photographs and immediately thought this is such a clever way and witty way to reinterpret early modern 16th, 17th century paintings. Might she be interested in collaborating with me and retelling some of the story of Matthias Schwarz and asking that question, what would a Matthias Schwarz look like? like nowadays and what is the importance of fashion for men today to emotionally express themselves how can we think about that how can we think about the role of fashion and commodities in our lives since the renaissance right up to now i kind of got very interested in in you know this this idea of of, of a kind of very contemporary moment a moment of of what's going on around me, but by framing it in this historical uh, setting. The fact that the, the garments were so central here to the, the kind of story, that actually I felt that it would be wrong of me to sort of pull something together on my own. And at that point, I realized that actually the way or there'd be a strength in this project if actually the garments were also made for this, this new character. That period of Renaissance you know, clothing can be massively, you know, inspirational to people and not necessarily the actual, you know... Garments themselves. Exactly, <laughs> not necessarily the silhouettes, but, yeah. you know, the, the flair of it. We spent three weeks uh, preparing for the set build. We, 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 we built each, um, each of the five sets individually and we had about three or four people helping us and um, we shot in a studio over in Hackney. We know that Schwarz was intensely interested in fashion history. On the first page of his book, he tells us that he's been talking to members of the older generation to find out what they were wearing in their youth. And he uses his book as a way of recording his own fashion history, or to put in his words, to see what becomes of it. We use the Tumblr in a similarly explorative way to chart the ways that fashion designers, photographers, artists and makers, as well as the media, are discussing Renaissance fashion today. Well, this project is a, um, a wonderful collaboration with the History Faculty here in Cambridge. And it's um, fruit, I think, of an uh, of a increasing policy of the museum to work closely with our academic colleagues to make use of the extraordinary um, resource we have here in Cambridge, not only of magnificent collections, but also of magnificent minds. But also what I like is the way that we've gone further afield. I mean, the illuminations, uh, the Schwarz illuminations, are way off in Germany. Um, Maisie Broadhead is a photographer working in London. And I think that kind of um, mixture, I think, is very fruitful. And, you know, I'm hugely grateful to the history faculty for their enthusiasm, for their ideas, and uh, for their essential good nature uh, working with us here at the Fitzwilliam.